Okay, so for this tutorial, I wanted to go over the use of auxiliary timelines in WatchOut. First, I wanted to go over why you'd use them. And a lot of the times, you might not even need to use aux timelines, in which case, you probably shouldn't. But I'll explain why I started using them when I was first beginning. So I was working at CBS, and it was we did some pretty simple shows. Every segment of the show, we had a, a stack of media. So it was segment A, and then you know segment B, segment C. And at first, it was very simple. That's, this is all it was. It was just a stack of media, um, vertically like this. And but it became very complicated because when we wanted to make a change on one monitor, we would do something like this. So we would we'd put the media and map it to that output. But then the issue is, is that, you know, let's say you want to change the media on, on the other monitor without then affecting the, the other that you just changed. So then you have to sort of do something like this. And then if you want to revert the other one back to normal then you have to do that and then you're you're really just in a mess and that started happening a lot so in came aux timelines so the first thing you can do is lay down your base layers so that your backgrounds are in our case it was the main content for that whole segment Okay, and so then, then what you'd do is you'd put the things that change on separate timelines. So for for here, like like I had over here, is that the content that changes on that left monitor would go on its own aux timeline. So then now I have freedom to add that in or get rid of it whenever I want. And then the same thing here. So now I have the freedom to change or stop uh, output output two independently. What I'm going to do is just go over how to build a template timeline that you can then just copy over and over and over again. So this is how I create how I create aux timelines. So I'll bring in a piece of media. Um, and this is will just be for the uh, left monitor here. So um, you want to have it. This is one way of doing it, at least. Um, you want to have the media start somewhere like 0.5 seconds or um, you know, 0.25, something like that. Really depends on the media that you're you're running. But so you put your piece of media right here. And then, by the way, hit Control T to do click jumps to time. I'll go over that in a tips and tricks section, I'm sure. <clears throat> so go to go to the beginning of your piece of media and hit Alt O to create opacity uh, tween. Go all the way down, hold control, and scroll up, and you in, you move in increments of 0.1 seconds. So what you want to do is go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Then you have a 0.5 second dissolve in. There you go. So, so maybe at the 2 second mark, let's say. So to again, to jump to an exact time, you have to type in. So the 2 second mark. I'm going to put a pause cue. And then a little bit above that, I will create the fade out. So this is set up for looping media, basically. So, and then at the end of this, you'd want to create a stop cue. By the way, to create a uh, any of these control cues, just hit Control P 
to create a play queue and control shift P to create a pause queue. So um, you want to stop the enclosing timeline so that, so under template now, so when I run my template timeline, it brings in a piece of media and when you click it again, it fades it out and stops the timeline. Okay, so that template was set up for looping videos, but now I'll show you how to create a template for non-looping videos. All right, so got rid of this pause queue, um, and I made sure that this was exactly two seconds long. So we have a piece of media, duration of two seconds, 0.5 and 0.5 fade in, fade out. And then at the end, there's a stop queue. All right, so what we wanna do, we wanna find out the media duration before we even start here. So this is 30 seconds and 33 milliseconds. So to create a timeline that's this exact length to play out the entire video, all you have to do, it's very simple, all you have to do is go to insert delete time and this is two seconds already, so then we just have to add the 28 seconds. So then we have 28.033, boom. Now we have the whole the whole video. Let's make sure that's not free running and looping. Um, so disable that. And um, you know now we have, we play the whole video. So, so we'll do it with another piece of media. Um, this one is only eight. This is uh, 8.334. Whoa, it's huge. But so here, you know, it's you'd only do 8.33 uh, 6.3334 6.334 and now that matches that duration. This is more for how you'd actually use this. So um, so for the, I'll just grab one of these looping videos um, and title it uh, and just grab one of these. Uh, make sure it's free run and looping. All right, so now the thing is, now I have these on these aux timelines, but you want to program in your changes. You don't really, at least for me, like I don't want to have to remember that I need to change loop A at some given time. I would like to actually have it programmed in that that change needs to occur. So what I do then is actually, I'll build out similarly to what I had before with the, with the layers, I will build out control cues so that um, again, that was control P. Um, and instead of, this says tell, so I'm telling timeline named loop A to run. And I'll just say run loop A. So, you know, we're good, we're running, we're uh, looping our normal stuff, and they ask for that change, and boom, now I have my my other piece of media and uh, we came into a pre-roll pre-roll issue there but I think these are mp4s and probably not even optimized I just downloaded them um, but so now you know you'd probably want the ability to stop it too so you might over here maybe put uh, stop queue so instead of run you just do stop and you could Label it stop loop A. And then you could stop it. Or if you wanted to, you could, uh, or if you wanted to, you could run it again and that would stop it too. So let's say you did that and you wanted to run it again to dissolve out. So I think I'll probably do more of an advanced video for aux timeline control at another time, maybe talking about using the stream deck and string commands, but I think this really covers a lot of the use cases for aux timelines, so 
think it, it's at least a good starting point. So if you like these tutorial videos and you want to see more, go ahead and subscribe and that'll help me out as well.